Hello, I'm Wendy. Today we're looking at some watercolour techniques. We're painting gorse and heather and it's a tutorial. I was looking through some of my photographs the other day and I came across this one. I've cropped, um, I've cropped a little bit out of it with this gorse brush and the heather and I really fancied having a go at it. It's a subject that I quite like. It's very busy. It's got lots of different colours and tones in it and um, I just found it really attractive so I thought well I'll have a bash at this and um, let's see if we can get a tutorial out of it. As you know if you follow my channel I don't paint um, exactly what's in front of me and what's in the photographs. I use it as an inspiration. I'm using some techniques that I hope will help you when you tackle pictures like this. It's not a particular step-by-step -step on this photograph. It's quite an experimental painting but uh, as I said, I hope that um, the way I tackle it and the techniques will help you in your own work. I did quite a loose pencil drawing. Um, I wasn't exactly sure where I was going to go with this painting. It was going to be quite experimental. So I didn't want to put too much pencil work in there. I used some masking fluid, as you can see, to mask out mainly the heather because I wanted to try and keep that quite pink. Now I know some people in the comments have said they've had a bit of problem with masking fluid or it's been too expensive but the one that I recommend which is in the description box below is the PBO drawing gum. I get that from Amazon and it isn't very expensive. It, it isn't a big bottle, I think the expensive ones are the big bottles of masking fluid. This is quite a small one. It's very nice consistency and it goes on very nicely and dries fairly quickly and comes off very easily with the rubber so I would recommend that. Now this um, video, the format of the painting that I'm doing is portrait and unfortunately um, YouTube always films or presents the videos as a landscape format so you're going to see quite a bit of clutter around the, the painting but what I will do is I will zoom in to the areas that I'm painting so that you can see them. Um, here with the masking fluid I've put on as I said some of the little bits on for the heather and I'm using a small rigger brush to put on the little twigs um, that were in the foreground there. I wanted to keep them quite thin. I also masked out a little bit in the gorse bush. I did that mainly because I didn't want to get it too blocked in and when the gorse bush was painted and I rubbed off the masking fluid, it should leave some white spaces that will let some air through, keep the bush from being too compacted. And so we'll see how that goes. If, if you find that you're doing that and the spaces you left are just not working, you can always fill them in or put some branches through. So when the masking fluid was dry, and do be careful with that, do make sure it is dry, otherwise you're nice watercolour brushes are going to pick up the masking fluid and it's not going to do them any good. Well when the masking was dry I wet the paper all, all over the sky area and then as you can see I'm dropping in some blue. I used cobalt blue, I felt that was um, quite a nice blue for this picture, it looked, it looked like cobalt. And um, I'm keeping it very light and I'm leaving some of the areas uncovered to give the effect of clouds in the sky. I'm showing you this in real time because I know particularly when you're a beginner you, do, you can have problems with these wet into wet washers. The secret really is to get the wetness right and it doesn't matter if it's a little bit runny the water underneath and then drop the, drop the paint in. You don't want to get this sky too dark. It does want to be a nice light sky and you want to try and keep the white areas around where you're going to be painting the gorse. So you're not going to be painting the oranges and the yellows over the blue. So you've got to think a little bit ahead um, regarding that. My next stage was um, putting in the first wash on the foreground. I like to do this. I like to look at my reference and to see what are the lightest colours there and to do some experimental mixing on the palette to try and get those colours as I'm seeing them these very lightest colours and then I'm going to work over that. There were some pinks in there that was the heather. There were some very neutral colours in there so I'm not using um, very complicated colours here. It was ultramarine, 
a little bit of burnt sienna. I'm using some raw sienna. I'm mixing maybe a bit of cobalt with some raw sienna to get some of the greens. And as I said, I'm just looking and trying to figure out and mix the nearest colours that I can see in the painting and keeping everything very wet, as you can see. Not doing a lot of tonal changes there, just a few and dotting it about and just letting the colour mix very sort of experimentally. My next stage was painting the actual gorse flowers and I'm using some cadmium orange and a yellow, a warm yellow probably would be best but it wouldn't make that much difference and just varying the colour. It's going on quite wet into wet and it's going on quite loosely. My style is to paint quite loosely. I, I can't paint a lot of detail. If you're having a go at this bush and you wanted to make the gorse more realistic, if you like, and a bit more detailed, then, then do that. But um, I, I tend to keep my brush strokes quite loose and dot them around just the way that I paint. And so what, what I'm doing is I'm placing these oranges where the gorse flowers are but looking at the photograph, the, the actual gorse flowers themselves were sort of going over a bit, so there were quite a few browns and greeny browns amongst the, the, uh, the flowers and the petals. So that's the colours that I'm mixing there. I'm putting some sort of neutrally browns and greens um, in the yellow and in the orange. I think if you don't do that, it's all going to look a bit garish. So I think, you know, when you're painting, the, the secret really is observation. Just look very carefully. Paint what um, what you can see and not what you think is there. So I'm just continuing um, adding these colours and adding the, the darker tones that are in there. The next stage was putting on the greens um, around the flowers and the colours that I was using here was mainly cobalt blue with a yellow and also mixed some sap green in there as well. I wanted to keep these greens quite light for the, um, for the first layer if you like because I'm going to darken them up and what I'm doing is just placing them around the orange so we've got um, we've got the orange flowers and then I'm putting these lighter greens around the orange. I'm not going over the top of the orange or you're going to lose the transparency of the flowers. The next stage was adding some of the darker greens now. I let the other greens dry first so I wasn't getting too much of a bleeding effect and I've mixed up a darker green here. Um, with a darker green, you could continue with the cobalt, but I do like to use a bit of Prussian blue if I'm making darker greens. So I would have used some Prussian blue, only a little because it is really strong. Some Prussian blue with raw sienna and maybe a touch of sap green as well. So that I'm, I'm um, adding some of these darker greens now to try and get more form into the, um, into the gorse bush. And again, I'm just sort of dotting around the colour. I've speeded this up a little bit. It's, um, it's times two speed. And for these darker greens, um, I, I'm sorry, I did add some burnt sienna as well. So it's Prussian blue with a little bit of raw sienna and some burnt sienna. It's the Prussian blue and the burnt sienna which give you these strong greens. 
as I was painting this I wasn't liking the composition that much I was thinking everything the bush looked a little bit too spiky and a bit too regular but um, you'll see as the painting progresses I do make some adjustments to that um, this is the thing about when you're working quite experimentally and um, you're not quite sure where the painting's going then you don't always like what's going down but um, you can change things I think it's a misconception that you can't change watercolour there are ways of changing watercolour and um, particularly using body colour something like a gouache you can make some changes I've also got some of those um, that masking fluid on which is when that rubs off it's going to make some more sort of holes for the birds to fly through so that's going to help as well but you see I did make some changes further on because I wasn't awfully happy with the composition as it stood there I'm working on the foreground now and just doing some of those colours that I saw making the colours a little bit stronger leaving some areas light so that you've got um, a bit of a contrast there in, in tones I didn't want to make the foreground too dark or too busy because the, the bush itself will be fairly dark and very, very busy. The next stage of the painting was um, tackling the branches and the twigs of the gorse bush. I mixed a strong colour with um, ultramarine and burnt sienna. If you wanted to vary that you could always use a little bit of the Prussian, make it more of a greeny colour. And I'm using a rigger brush to, to paint both the branches and the little twigs as well. I'm continuing the following section in real time. In this next section I've, um, I've speeded the video up a little bit because um, it gets a little bit tedious. I think maybe I went over the top a little bit with the busyness and I was very grateful that I'd put that masking fluid on to, uh, to give me a few more holes in the bush. I don't know, um, I could have left it at this stage. I did do a fair amount of dotting around and, um, well not fiddling, but putting on, it was a very busy scene and uh, as I said I do sometimes overdo things a little bit. But it wasn't too bad and um, if we look at the next section when we're um, standing back a bit from the picture and rubbing out the masking fluid I think it works pretty well. So here we have the masking fluid rubbed off and um, what I'm doing now is I'm putting some of a, a pink on for the heather, varying the shades a little bit. Um, I think I used rose madder or a little bit of crimson alizarin, one of your favourite colours, something that's um, not too garish, it was, the heather was a, a sort of a pinky, purpley sort of colour. And with a small brush I used one of my very dark greens just to dot some of those darks around, around the um, purple colour just to make some of the heather flowers stand out a little bit. And a bit more fine tuning on the twigs. As you can see, I do have those gaps in there where I rub the masking fluid out, which I think work quite well. I left most of them and then I um, put through some little twigs, as you can see me doing there. I used a small rigger brush to put some lines underneath those um, little t white light coloured twigs that I'd masked out just to um, add more interest and to 
give them a bit of life and a little bit of 3D-ness, if you like. Um, I didn't do a lot more on the foreground. As I said, I wanted to try and keep that quite uh, restful because the, the top of the picture is so busy. I could have left it there, but um, I did add one or two more little bits of dark shadow underneath the tree. And on the right hand side, I felt it was very, very white. So I very carefully just added a little bit more of the blue sky there, trying not to, to smudge the twigs and the leaves. I always like a little bit of splatter work in the foreground, um, nothing over the top, but um, just adding that little bit more interest in there, using a dark green or a dark brown. And uh, as you can see, it's a good idea to, to cover the area where you don't want the splatter up, because the um, splatter does go everywhere, especially with me. If you want to, you can always add a little bit more of the body colour, some white, something like a white gouache, if you feel you've got some areas that are a little bit too blocked in. You can use that quite extensively, really, in some places, because it will blend in with the sky. So um, it's one of these things about watercolour, people saying, oh, you can't change it once you've done it. Of course you can. I've got a video out that you might like to have a look at that um, talks about how to lift out paint to change your watercolour. And you can always use body colour, you can use gouache on it as well. Um, you can buy gouache paints um, quite easily in different colours that you can use. I tend to tint my uh, white gouache with my watercolour when I do use it as a body colour. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope the techniques do help you when you're tackling this sort of subject. I do paint quite loosely, as you know, but um, you could adapt these techniques to if you paint in a more detailed, representational manner. It's keeping the watercolour transparent, not overworking, and leaving these white spaces as well. If you do like my channel and you like how I tackle my painting, then do subscribe if you've not done so already. And you can give my videos a like, which always helps me with the algorithm whatever they call it on YouTube to get more views. Anyway bye for now and um, happy painting.